Now, if you are now talking about how crowdsourcing can be leveraged uh, when you do not know the qualities, then it becomes uh, a very interesting problem. Uh, so it turns out that it now requires a fusion of mechanism design with machine learning because you do not know the qualities, so you have to learn the qualities. But in the process of learning the qualities, if it happens that the players being strategic manipulate the learning algorithm, then you have a problem. So it is possible that uh, the game theoretic players can actually manipulate your learning algorithm. So how do you now design a learning algorithm that is robust to possible manipulations by the players becomes a very important issue. So you now have both machine learning and mechanism design uh, working together. So here, we, so how do you how do you combine these two tools? We have already seen what mechanism design does. Uh, mechanism design, what it does is, uh, you know, it tries to induce truthful reporting of private information. That is what mechanism design does. That's one of the things that mechanism design does. Whereas, uh, what does machine learning do? Right? Forget about the picture that I have given on the right hand side. I'll talk to that. Right? What does machine learning do? The machine learning, what it does, it tries to estimate. Uh, in, in a multi agent setting, machine learning seeks to learn the preferences or types of the agents through any available data or through intelligent exploration. And you would have known about uh, the classical multi arm bandit problem where the different arms, the different arms produce stochastic rewards with fixed but unknown distributions. And there, are, there, are, there is a total of capital T rounds, maybe 1000 rounds. Over which what you have to do is you have to explore the rewards which are produced by the different arms and learn the expected rewards produced by these arms as quickly as possible and then keep pulling only that arm which produces the highest reward for you. Uh, so that over these thousand rounds or capital T rounds you maximize the total accumulated reward that is produced by pulling one arm at a time. Right? I have given the example of uh, Ravanasura here because he is a canonical example of a multi-armed bandit. Right? But this multi-armed bandit called Ravanasura never knew how to pull those arms together. He always pulled the arms in the wrong way. But we would like a multi-armed bandit who will actually pull the arms in the right way and maximize the total reward over a certain number of arms. It turns out that in crowdsourcing, uh, you can do the learning using a multi-armed bandit mechanism. So you have crowd workers, you are trying to learn the qualities of these crowd workers. So what you do is that you employ a crowd worker a certain number of times and then observing the qualities produced by these crowd workers, you will be actually able to learn uh, the qualities of these crowd workers. But then what would happen is that this learning algorithm is known to the crowd workers. It could be known to the crowd workers and if the crowd workers are very smart, intelligent, rational, game theoretic, the crowd workers actually may manipulate the learning algorithm itself. So you now have to come up with uh, uh, you know, learning algorithms for multi-arm bandit setting which are robust to manipulations by the players and uh, so it turns out that uh, most modern problems now, most of the emerging problems which involve strategic agents actually involve this problem of uh, not only try to extract private information truthfully, but also learning certain parameters of the strategic agents. Right. And we have just now seen the example of crowdsourcing, but sponsored search options on the web that we talked about is another classical example where this kind of uh, estimation and elicitation are going on simultaneously. And then it happens all the time in online auctions. And even in smart grids, uh, you know, this finds uh, very interesting applications. So the point is that machine learning and mechanism design are very well investigated as individual problems, but uh, you know, pose very challenging research questions when you try to do them together. So what we have tried to do is, uh, in the past two or three years, we have taken several baby steps in the direction of. Uh, you know, combining machine learning with mechanism design in the context of some 
interesting specific uh, applications. Okay, so this gives uh, an idea of how such a learning mechanism may look like. Don't have the time to go through this. And uh, what we have done is to uh, propose what are called multi-arm bandit mechanisms. Um, so we published our first paper in Current Science in 2013. So this special issue on game theory that was edited by Nobel laureate Professor Eric Maskin. And uh, more recently, uh, we have uh, a survey paper on mechanism design for stochastic multi-arm bandit problems, uh, which is appearing in the Indian Journal of Pure and Applied Mathematics, uh, which is going to be a commemorative issue of uh, Professor Vivek Borker's 60th birthday. And more recently, we have papers in AMAS 2015 and AAAI 2015 on math mechanisms uh, being applied in the crowdsourcing setting. But uh, I have to confess that our efforts so far are very superficial in this direction. And uh, you know, if you want to fuse mechanism design with machine learning, uh, I think there's a lot more that needs to be done. So this is my summary of uh, the talk. Um, I did not talk about networks at all, but crowdsourcing uh, basically leads to network, very interesting networks. Crowdsourcing networks are very complex because they could be large scale. If they are deployed in nation level campaigns, crowdsourcing networks could be extremely large scale. Then uh, they contain strategic players and you don't know what the qualities of these crowd workers are. So if you want to design incentives so that the crowd workers accomplish the tasks in the best possible way, then you have to use mechanism design. And if you also want to get a complete solution to the problem by estimating the qualities of these crowd workers also, then you'll have to use both machine learning and mechanism design uh, together. So all that I can say is that there are plenty of interesting problems waiting to be explored. Those of you who uh, would like to explore some of these problems are uh, you know, most welcome to contact me at hari at csa.iisc.eafnet.in or narahari.yadati at gmail.com. Thank you very much. So if you have any questions, then just buy a copy of my book. And all the answers can be found in that. <laughs> what are your take on modeling of utility functions? Uh, utility functions, like modeling of utility functions of agents. So, uh, what functions? Utility, utility, oh, utility functions. Utility functions. Utility functions. Oh, that's a that's a, that's a hard part uh, because uh, you know when you when you want to use game theory or mechanism design, the first thing that you need is a formulation of the underlying game. So if you want to formulate an underlying game, you should know who the players are. In many situations, you may not even know who the players are. Right? Having known the players, you should know what their strategy sets are. And then having known the strategy sets, for every strategy profile, you should say what the utility of these players are. So that turns out to be uh, interesting and a hard problem. And how the problem is solved, if you are able to formulate the underlying game properly and correctly. Uh, let's say we have the utility functions defined, but let's say when we are defining the social functions, then um, defining the social functions based on the utility functions might be a problem because there can be privacy issues. I mean, the agents, they may not want to disclose their specific coefficients of these so, utility um, functions. Yeah, that, uh, that's a, an interesting question. Uh, you would see that uh, we, the utility functions of the players are common knowledge we assume that the utility functions of the players are common knowledge. But every player can have his own or her own private information. That is not common knowledge. Mechanism design is all about extracting that private information in a truthful way. But the utility functions are common knowledge. Right? Social choice function is also common knowledge. Uh, thank you for, for your talk. That uh, was very uh, interesting. So there has been a lot of uh, theoretical work that has been done on uh, mechanism uh, design. Uh, could you comment on the algorithms that are uh, today available and their efficiency for solving the uh, classical mechanism designs uh, problems? Um, so, uh, okay. 
uh, this question actually uh, requires an elaborate answer, but I will try to give as short an answer as possible. Uh, many times mechanism design is also tied with uh, computing uh, under like equilibrium. Now computing Nash equilibrium is one of the most challenging problems that algorithmic game theorists, uh, many theoretical computer scientists are engaged with this problem for the past 20 years and only uh, in 2008 uh, Daskal from MIT was able to show that this problem of computing the Nash equilibrium is actually PPAD complete uh, problem. So that is on one side. But it turns out that uh, mechanism design theory also has found a way of, uh, you know, going around this problem. So circumventing this problem. How have they done it? For example, VCG mechanisms, the so-called degree Claude Groves mechanisms. Now it turns out that if you want to, if you want to design VCG mechanisms, uh, you don't need to compute the Nash equilibrium because the theory will tell you what the Nash equilibrium is. And if the allocation problem itself is polynomial time, allocation is uh, if you have a set of items and a, a collection of bidders, right? how do you allocate these items uh, to these bidders? That is the allocation problem. So if the allocation pro problem itself is uh, polynomial time solvable, then VCG mechanisms are extremely efficient. However, it turns out that if you go beyond uh, single item options, uh, you can have multiple units. You can have 1000 units of the same single uh, indivisible item. Uh, you are reasonably safe there, but if you have combinatorial bidding, and if you have multiple item types, then it turns out that uh, the allocation problem itself could turn out to be a set packing problem in the forward case. It could turn out to be a set covering problem in the reverse case. And both are NP hard problems. So if the allocation problem turns out to be NP hard, then uh, you know mechanism design gets into problems. Economists design the mechanisms without worrying too much about the computational issues. It is only in the last two decades that uh, researchers have started worrying about the computational complexity. One of the ways in which, for example, in the case of combinatorial options, how the problem could be solved is by having approximate allocations. So that is what we did in the crowdsourcing example. You can have an approximate allocation, and by combining that with uh, appropriately defined payments, you can actually make the mechanism itself truthful. Now, the crucial property that you need for the allocation uh, allocation problem is monotonicity. If you can show that your allocation is monotone, even if you have only an approximate uh, algorithm for solving the problem, you can compute payments which will make the entire mechanism dominant strategy incentive compatible or truthful in general. Right? So computational complexity is a very, very important issue uh, engaging uh, a large number of researchers in this area, um, but in very special settings, uh, there are extremely efficient, uh, you know, mechanism design solutions to the problem. But in very very special settings. Sir, I have one very general question that I'd like to ask you. Uh, given that I'm, I'm yet to complete my bachelor's degree, uh, and, and I, I find, it, find mechanism design very interesting along with game theory, so so what should be the logical steps of approaching a field like this? Because uh, it, it's not a not a basic field that I assume. So buy a, buy a copy of my book and start reading. <laughs> yeah, and what about the prerequisites? So what are the things that I should be clear about in my mind? Prerequisites uh, for this would be uh, probability. Uh, linear algebra, uh, calculus, and if you know analysis, that would be very nice. But uh, knowing these things, even at B Tech level, B B Tech level, you will still be able to read some books on game theory. Right? And as you pick up some of these uh, mathematical paraphernalia as you go along, you will be able to read more advanced books. Okay, thank you, sir. So I would not rate my book as an advanced book, though it does have advanced topics. But uh, it is accessible to uh, B Tech students in their final year, M Tech students in their first year, and so on. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you.